Hey you guys, welcome back to my dining room to the conclusion of this Max Wedge. Welcome back to Nick's Garage, a place where great things come together. This is where Nick rebuilds historic engines for customers who share his passion for American muscle. Last week, we watched as Nick and Shyad got this freshly rebuilt Max Wedge fired up for the first time. The old beast gave the guys a little bit of a hard time with a defective distributor and some valve float at high RPM. Okay. Nick has been busy tuning the huge V8 and getting all that new power under control. Today the engine will be tested again, this time with the iconic exhaust manifolds in place. Hello, my name is Nick and welcome to my shop. All right, we're still working on this Max Wedge 426. Actually, it's a 440. Anyways, we're working on this Max Wedge, and we had some issues on the uh, first uh, episode that we had a problem with the distributor, so we had to replace it, because we had an uh, issue with the uh, cast iron distributor that my client brought in. So anyways, to go for the testing with the exhaust uh, headers that we had before. So we tested it with the vacuum distributor that I supplied. We also had these headers, and we also had to shim up the springs because we were getting valve flow at 55, 5600 RPM. So what we did is we uh, shimmed the valve springs, we got the timing with this distributor, with the headers, and we maxed out the horsepower. And the results, the best test with the headers was at 4300 RPM, we pulled out a 580.6 foot-pounds of torque. And at 5400 RPM, we pulled out a 563.3 horsepower. Right now, we also have put exhaust models because my client's picking up this engine with the exhaust manifolds. This is the way it's gonna be installed in the car. So we did a few tests with exhaust manifolds and we found that it was running a bit too rich. So what we did is we leaned out the carburetor uh, medium rods, also put lighter springs for the rods because it's got less vacuum with a radical cam. And now we're just about to get it warmed up so we can do some testing with the exhaust manifolds. In 64, the max switch, this is the Ram horn exhaust manifolds, high performance exhaust manifolds. They look like headers. This is what came in the car. This is what Max Wedge, of course, came with it from the factory. And this is exactly what my client wants, the way it came from the factory. And this is exactly the way he's gonna put it into the car. Yes, they are strange looking. They are look like headers. But what's the horsepower difference? We don't know. So what we're gonna do is now, we're gonna tune it, run it, make some tests, and we'll take it from there. We had to make some customized pipes because we don't have these exhaust models very often in the dining room. So Shayad uh, took the uh, opportunity to make our pipes here to work with these manifolds, which is a three inch pipe right up to the outlet. Nick actually took these to a machine shop and had it. That's a, it's a very strange four bolt flange. So we had these made. I had this 90 degree pipe welded on, a little bit of finessing, and then we actually ran it without these reducers. And it was loud. how loud was it? It was very loud. Insane. You could you could feel it in your chest. And you feel the rubble in the floor. Oh yeah, it was it was next level. So we did a little bit of uh, warming up, testing with it, and uh, we decided we had to put these on because and it of was course out of and of course what's important is that you know you want to keep the room as quiet as you can so we could hear if there's any noises in the engine. Yes. Remember when this thing was running without the pipes? We couldn't hear anything. We couldn't hear. We couldn't anything. hear anything. And. Uh, Shad, you did a great job. Thank you. And now let's get it running, see what it does. I'm very excited. Okay. Let's see what she does. Let's go. Here okay. we go. Let's warm it up. O2 sensor on. Let's get, uh, to get it activated. And then after that, let's get it started. And now with the new pipes you installed, Shayad, 
Let's see how it's gonna sound. A lot quieter. We'll actually uh, be able to hear the motor this time. And I could feel the floor rumbling before. <laughs> okay. It's got a very aggressive cam. It's gonna sound incredible in the car. Let's, let's hear those. You know, I just wanted to say we got 600 lift on this cam and also 250 duration at 50. Yeah, it's a big, big it's cam. It's also a hydraulic flat tappet. Something very simple. We got a adjustable rockers on it. Aluminum heads, trick flow, 270 intake runner. Let's show those with a max wedge. Here we go. Not bad. Already idle. Got the air fuel ratio right on the money. Okay, Beauty. here we go. The 
get some numbers. You know, don't forget now, we are not running headers. We were running the exhaust manifolds and we leaned it out a bit because the uh, exhaust manifolds needed less fuel. And here we go. So we maxed out. Okay, maybe we should make another test back to back. What do you think? Uh, not against that at all. You know what? This is our first test. Let's try another one. Okay. The timing I know is perfect. The air fuel ratio is perfect. All I got to make sure is that... Uh, we need to come we, down 10 degrees or so cool it wise. Yeah, and I'm going to run the same temperature we did on this one. We ran yeah, it at uh, 159. Okay. Sorry, we ran it at 159, 160. Right. So let's get back to that, which is any minute. Okay. With the fan on, let's go. We're ready. Whoa. Here we go. And we got the idle back. It's good. It, it sounds good. It's did, that distributor. Yes. It's yeah. that distributor. So we're staying with that distributor for now. Yes. Headers are gone. Manifolds are on it. Looking good. Okay, let's go, Shad. Here we go. 160. Okay. Hey, hey, we're back up. We're back up, hey. We're, I told you that the timing is where it is is best. Yeah, yeah. It's 36, 37 degrees. The, mar the mark that you put initially, it's right on. that's the spot. You got it. Okay, here we go. Hey, we're, we're look at 560 foot pounds of torque. 550 you, horse almost. Yeah. That ain't bad, man. Okay, so here we go. This is headers versus exhaust manifolds. Not, okay. just, not just any exhaust let's manifolds. just let's compare it okay here okay now with the headers we got a 580 foot pounds of torque at 4300 versus the cast iron which is 560 at 4800 rpm wow later yeah. later right at 43 it's 547 so it's yeah. pretty flat okay so we pulled out a maximum of what 560 at 4800 foot pounds of torque no. and now let's go to horsepower we pulled out a 547 at 54 versus 563 at 5400 RPM with the headers. That's what, 16 horsepower down? Yeah. Which is less than we thought it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, I thought it would be about maybe 25 horsepower. 25, with 30, the, yeah. Yeah, but not bad. Not bad at all. 63. All. So what do we got? 547, 63. You're right, under 20 horsepower. Yeah. Yeah, there you have it, man. Very you know, you know, You know, these manifolds are not bad at all. You think about it you know after all who wants to work with headers you know uh, after uh, i've done so many headers in my life I, you know i don't blame jim for going with the exhaust models i'm with him of course it's also factory look to his uh, 64 fury this is awesome you know yeah. really i and you know i also wanted to say something else you guys this is the engine that we installed the pan and we made a video that the gasket makes the seal now if you guys want to see george if you want to take your camera go around the oil pan and show them there's any oil leaks whatsoever. Here we go. Take a look, you guys. Do you see any oil leak whatsoever? Check it out. And this is the oil pan that we installed. The Millenden oil pan on this 440 Max Wedge. There you have it, you guys. And there it is. Like I've always said for many, many years, you guys. You know, I'm going to make... We've made so far... How many tests? Take a look. Test number 34. So we got 34 tests on this engine so far. So there we go. We had to thicken out the meter watts, put in lighter springs to get the idle we wanted. We got the perfect air fuel ratio of 12.9, 13.0 at full throttle. I got 13 at the idle. So the timing is at 36, 37 degrees. I got a camshaft of about 600 left with 250 duration at 50. It's a hydraulic flat tap it. It is a max wedge. And this is the results we have. And another thing I wanted to say that a lot of guys are commenting on the bolts yes the bolts from the front going to the rear they start at two inch two and a quarter two and a half with the lock washers also lubricated they're installed like that the only two bolts i changed to a little bit shorter with the two external bolts that i did not like because they were too long these were the other bolts with the lock washers that go on the ends on the outside but they were too long so i didn't go with these and I also installed these special lock washers only on the inside. 
and I use flat hardened washers on the outer bolts just to have a nicer look and of course it's going to do the job properly. And there you have it you guys. The next thing I got to do is work on this cast iron distributor which I'm going to do later on. I just want to match apples with apples with my vacuum distributor. And if anybody's asking why the vacuum distributor is not connected, we don't have enough vacuum to make the distributor work. And you know what, for this reason, I also put a curve kit on this that I got full advance the moment it starts. So we don't need a vacuum advance. I read up an article from Hard Rod Magazine that they've done an engine like this with a four barrel, with a single plate. Single four barrel. And they, they did a lot better with a four barrel over this max wedge. Now this engine has the potential of easy 600 horsepower with a good four bow setup. But we're not gonna go there because Jim wants the nostalgia look the way it came in back in 64, which is great. You know, he's not looking for horsepower. He just wants to go cruising with the car, which I don't blame him one bit. Now, if this was your car, wouldn't you like this? Yes. I would not kick her out of bed. This thing is beautiful. I wouldn't change a thing. No, no. Actually, I would change one thing. What would you change? Two smaller carburetors. Yes, these are 750 CFM each carburetor. That's 1500 CFM. It's a lot. You know, it's not even a stroker. It is a 440 cubic inch 30 overboard, which is a 446 cubic inch. But you know what? It's a cruiser. It's not racing with it. And it sounds good. It's got no noises. It's got no oil leaks. I mean, what more can you ask for? Okay, so we got one more final test. And Shayad, what is it? Air cleaners. Let me go get them. Go, let's go. I'm excited, so I don't want to keep the dyno waiting. I think I'm missing a base. Unless there's two bases there. Yeah, there are two bases. <laughs> there's two bases. Okay. There we go. Nice. Here we go. Oh no. Oh, we got a problem here now. Yeah, I noticed that. A uh, fuel line. Okay, we got a problem. Well, doesn't look like we're gonna test these today. No, you know what, wait. <laughs> you know me, man, I'm gonna find a way to get it done. You know what? What if we flip them upside down? Okay, no. we have an issue. It's here the rod, that. yeah. You know what, if I can fly 290 degrees to go down, I'll see what I can do. Okay, so we have an issue here, but you know what? I really want to get it tested with the air cleaners on. Here we are, it's uh, after hours. All the uh, suppliers are closed today. And then again, when you want a supplier to get a part the same minute or the same day, it's not gonna be possible. So we had these spacers in stock here at the, in our dining room. We installed them just to make a test with air cleaners, but I'm just curious. Now we did the header test, manifold test, and now let's take it with the air cleaners. This is gonna be pretty interesting. It's very interesting. You guys ready? Let's go. How much horsepower are we gonna lose? You know what? I'm actually impressed with how little we lost with these. So I'm going to be positive and say seven horsepower. Okay. What do you think? I would say the same thing. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Very specific. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go. Who knows? It might even change their fuel ratio. That's fine. That's out. very true. This kind of uh, two air cleaners. Wow, this is strange. You want it on a max wedge, eh? It looks so much different from in here now with the two air cleaners on. Yeah. You said it, buddy. Okay, uh, let's warm it up again. Here we go. See if it shows a rich mix on okay. idle. You got it. Look, 
Went back. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna get it. Yeah. We're gonna get it. Don't break the temperatures. I think we're ready. Good, good. Low pressure's good. Temperature. You know what? We have a lot of viewers that say, you know what, Nick, why don't you run the temperature 180, 185 degrees Fahrenheit? Just to say something, uh, shut the fan for a second. I'm gonna make a test with the air cleaners on with the same coolant temperature of 159, 160. I know some of viewers are asking, Nick, why don't you run it hotter? But I noticed all the other people around the world when they dyno test engines, I run them above 160 degrees Fahrenheit. You know what these other guys run? 110, 120. That's like, cheating. That's, that's really, cheating. yeah, that's really cold. But at least we run within a 160 number. But here we go. We're on 158. We're ready to go. Put the fan. Let's go, Shyat. Wow. Starts right away. Well, you're, you're my here we go. Same idle, and I always want to make sure. Here we go. Okay, what did we get? I see a huge loss of power down low. 523. Wow. That's 547. 24 horsepower loss. Wow. And not much. 44 eh? foot pounds. Okay. Wow. You know the reason is. Now with the air cleaners on, we're running super lean. This is, uh, this is now, you know, you know what? We'll keep the same springs, change the rods, the so rods we had. We're gonna put the old rods that yeah, we had we're running, back in. Yeah, we're running a 14.2, 13.9 air fuel ratio. That's way too lean. So, okay now, we gotta richen it out because the car's gonna run with air, clean, air filters mm -hmm. on. So we gotta put the same rods back in. Okay. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. The air cleaners have made a significant difference. So once Nick has maxed out the max wedge with headers and with manifolds, his focus changes to getting the setup tuned for the way it will run in the car. We've just made a test and we lost uh, quite a bit of horsepower, quite a bit of foot pounds of torque. And we seem to be running very lean right now with the air cleaners on. So what Shad and I have done is now we went back to the original rods that came with the carburetor I guess it was designed to work with the air cleaners. So we put back the same rods, we got the air cleaners back on, and let's make a test and see where we go. Here we go. I have to admit, it looks cool with the two air cleaners on. It does, it really does. It man. really looks it cool. It really looks cool, Pro especially from this angle. Yeah, and he's got the two yellow emission stickers that go on each air cleaner, ah, which he's gonna put on later on, so nice. it's gonna have a nice little touch yeah. to it. Okay, here we go. Fan on. I'm ready. We did pick up power though. We did, eh? What do we got? We got 527 at 5400. Okay. And torque, a little bit of an improvement, 525. Actually, it's 526 foot pounds of torque at 4900. Five. Yeah. And 527 horsepower at 54. Strange. But let's check the air fuel ratio. It ran lean. Again. Yeah, 14, 14, wow. 2, 14, 1. It's running too lean. It's running lean in the midsection That's more right. than the beginning and end. Yeah, but you know, overall, I'm not crazy about it. No.
So we just went to another set of medium rods. We went to a set of a slightly thinner. So we're just hoping to get it richened out a bit now with the air cleaners, or should I say with the air filters on. Also because we have a more aggressive cap, so it's consuming more fuel. So we just went to a, not a bigger jet, a thinner rod, which translates to another bigger jet actually for the fuel. So let's get it running and see how it goes. Okay, let's go. All set, here we go. We're heading in the right direction, Shia. Look, 523 versus 530. 530, yeah. 530. And torque is up to 530 as well. 530, so we're going in the right direction. It needs to be richened out. Let me just take a glance at the air fuel ratio. 13.5, 13.8, 14.1. Damn, it still needs to be richened out a bit. Yes. So with this cam, with the air cleaners on, we need to go to a much thinner rod. So do you suggest we go to another rod yeah, or perhaps yeah. another jet? We went to a 47 tip. No, we're not going to go to jet. We're right. jets. Okay. Is there anything smaller than a 47? Uh, not that I've seen. I think okay. that's the thinnest one we had. All right. Don't forget this is full throttle, right? Right. I also want to see a part throttle. But the thing is, we're in the right direction. So we're, so far, if you want to compare this, I'm going to print this just to see what we got compared to cast iron. And then I want to run a hotter temperature, but Air fuel ratio 13.5, 13.8, 14. Not too crazy. I like to see a 12.9, 13.0, 13.1. .1. Okay. Well, it starts off in the right direction, but then it just leans out heavy in the midsection. That's right. I like to make a test without the airplanes. What do you think? Right just now? To see. Yeah. Just to see how it sits? Let's yeah. go. I'll oh, take yeah, it off. I, I have to. Uh, yeah, take them off, Shia, please. I just want to see something. You know what you could do, eh? One, run one carburetor with an air cleaner on and the other one without it. But no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. Okay. All right. That's strange. We still need to richen it out. Shall we have any fuel? Yeah, we got fuel. We're we got good. enough? We're good. Okay. We're good. All right. I'm Perfect. just, uh, I didn't do any changes. All we did was remove the air cleaners. I just want to see... Uh, if now it should be running, I just want to see if my instruments are working. Mm -hmm. It should run rich. Yes, yes. Okay. We should see a little hit. In yeah, we should be well. running richer than we did before because we went to a smaller rod than factory. Right. But then again, it's another cam. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Here we go. It didn't do as bad as I thought it was going to do. It is. It's, it's yeah. not that bad, actually, power-wise. 12.6, 12 12.9. 12 That's, That's not perfect. bad. Air fuel ratio is good there. Yeah. So, here we go. We got the 559.2 foot-pounds of torque at 4,800 RPM. And the horsepower came in at? 55. 5 54. 5,400 RPM. We got 546 horsepower. Not bad. No, it's not bad at all. We got we got the exhaust manifolds it's... on. Don't forget. So we're gonna leave so, these uh, rods in. Yeah, we're right on the money. Yeah, you know it's gonna be slightly lean with the air cleaners on, but I'm not gonna go any further. I'm just gonna talk to my client. After dozens of tests and more than a few late nights with the Max Wedge, Nick is ready to call his client and show him the engine working as it should. There's still more work to be done, but even Nick has to sleep sometimes. 
All right, I just want to abandon the air cleaner test because you know we have to sit here now, take apart the carburetors, and change the jets. I want to sit this out and wait for my client to see if we want to do this uh, changes. But in the meantime, I just wanted to say that the best test headers versus exhaust manifolds with no air cleaners on, and this is the results. Like I said earlier, with the headers, we had a 581 foot pounds of torque at 4300 RPM. And horsepower came in at 563.3 at 5,400 RPMs versus the cast iron manifolds after changing a few jets, I'm sorry, changing a few rods for air fuel ratio. We have 560 foot-pounds of torque at 4,800 RPM and horsepower came in at 546 at 5,400 RPMs. Those are the results for cast iron versus headers. That's not 16, that bad. 16, 17 horsepower loss with exhaust manifolds. Torque, we lost about 20 foot-pounds of torque. So here we have it, you guys. With the manifolds, we lost 20 foot-pounds of torque and about 15, 16 horsepower with the manifolds. A loss of that. In your opinion, is this a worthwhile you know, downgrade? You know what? For me, yes, I would stick with the manifolds. It's not a big drop, not a big change for me. I still have enough power and torque on this thing. So if this was my engine, yes, I would stick up with this. Okay. So what we got to do now, we got to richen out the carburetor. So what we got to do is with the air cleaners on, it is run slightly leaner than it should. So because of the cam profile, we're gonna have to remove these uh, carburetor tops and change all the jets. So that's gonna be some time consuming. And I also wanna get to the details with this with my client. So right now we're gonna stop where we are because I just want to figure out the maximum horsepower headers versus cast iron manifolds. But now without the air cleaners, we're not gonna do any further testing. It is getting late at night. And it was, but then again, like I said, we're gonna have to change the jets to get the right air fuel ratio with the air cleaners on. And there's the results, manifolds versus headers. Anyway, so what I wanted to do is now, I wanna wait for my client to come in in a couple of days. So we're gonna see, we're gonna play with the air fuel ratio and the jetting with the air cleaners on. Thanks for spending time with us here on the Big Max Way Journal Dining Room. I still have more work to do and I'll keep you guys up to date. Thank you very much for watching us. Great engines like the Max Wedge are a passion for Nick, and he can't wait to see what his customers will bring him next. But there are still even more surprises waiting for Nick in the shop tonight. All the beautiful things his viewers have sent him in the mail. It's another night late working on my shop, and I'm still getting gifts after Christmas, and let's get going. And we got a few more to see. All right. And this is a flag from the state of Massachusetts. This is a Dan and Chrissy that came in person that uh, came to visit our shop a few weeks ago. And of course, they brought us the flag of Massachusetts. So I want to say uh, thank you to Dan and Chrissy that paid us a visit here in the shop. And of course, the flag, I believe, of the state of Massachusetts. Okay, Dan, Chrissy, thank you very much. Here we go. State flag of Massachusetts. Thank you, guys. On our last live show, I asked for a couple of things, and you know what? I asked for two pieces, and they both came in on our <laughs> mail time, or should I say, in our mail. So this is, uh, I believe this is the exhaust manifold heat shield gasket for the 340 for Brad's car. And this one here is from Ken, Ken from British Columbia. I gotta give him a special thank you. I asked him a lot from whatever he wants for the gasket. And you know, something like this is very rare. You don't find them anymore. Ken has had this for over 40 years in storage. Okay, here we go. When was the last time I saw a gasket like this? Wow. Ken, I gotta give you a special thank you, man. You saved my life on this one. Oh, wow. This is something, this is nice, the demon. All the way from BC. Hello, Nick. Well, consider yourself lucky because I sell, I sell and give up my parts. Monster cars are my passion and all and few. Love your show and happy help the cause. Ken Paddock. Yes, sir. Two gaskets. He sent me two gaskets. Oh, I gotta see this. Wow. I have another gasket coming from another uh, gentleman from Peru. Another exhaust model for gasket. But you know, I'm gonna keep one for another future project if I build a 340. But I've kept one here for Brad. Anyway, she's got a price on it. I'm gonna send him the money for this. It's awful cheap for what he's uh, sending it to me for, plus the shipping. And these gaskets sat on a shelf for 40 years. Can't believe how time flies. Well, Ken, I gotta say, you know, I know time flies, but I gotta give you a special thank you because this 
It's something you don't find anymore. It's very rare, it's unique. Not Chrysler, it's Jobber, but it is made for a 340. This is a heat shield. It's also an exhaust manifold gasket. And it also, when the spark plugs are here, the cables, the spark plug wires, do not burn on the exhaust manifold on the driver's side because it goes upwards. And this is the reason why you need this. So if you want to do a detailed job with the high performance manifolds, you need this to finish the job. And because of you, Ken, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. All right, a special thanks to Ken for giving me the gasket for the 340 that I've asked for in my live show. And I've also asked on the live show again for an intake manifold heat shield for a 426 semi. And this one comes from Tyler. You know, these live shows, they really are something, you know, uh, they're, they work for me. You know, we have so many viewers watching us and I've asked for a few items. I've asked for the gasket on the 340. I was lucky enough to find it. And now I've got the heat shield for a 426 semi that I need for Ray's 71 Hemi Cuda. And here it is. It's a simple piece of metal. And again, you can't find it. Just like the gasket, you can't find it nowhere. That's why I'm asking my viewers to help me on this case. Do we have a letter here anywhere? No letter. Anyways, Tyler, I want to say a very special thank you. This is exactly what I need. Wow, now I can finish the job. So I could do raised hemi on it. This is the one that goes underneath the intake manifold. The oil splash that goes on to the, uh, to keep the intake cooler. Wow, another piece that I wanted. So this live show, and I gotta thank my viewers, you know. And I gotta admit that only not only did these guys also send me the parts, I also had a lot of viewers that gave me contacts and emails where to go and where to search for. So a special thank you to all you guys that were trying to help me out in this situation. We're not sure where this one came from. This one came from the good people from Amazon. And who is it from? Well, let's see if there's a letter inside. Here we go. Oh, there's coffee here. All right. And this is from a gift from Mr. E. Enjoy your gift. It might like it. I drink this instead. I drink this instead of coffee. Tastes like chocolate. Hope to see you soon from Mr. E. Okay, Mr. E, thank you very much. And this is Boot Coco. Wow, I never had this. I'm gonna try it. It's not coffee, it's cocoa. And I love cocoa, let me tell you, I love chocolate. You know what, we gotta do this. This is something special. Wow. Thank you, Mr. E, thank you very much. What more can you ask for? Our, our viewers send us the best stuff. Thank you, Mr. E. Here's another one from Canada. And this is from Robin from New Brunswick. Okay, let's see what we've got here. No, I've never been to New Brunswick, you guys. I always say I wanna go there one day. But you know what? I'm so stuck in this shop, I never have time to do anything. Oh, wow. Here's the letter. Mopar Art by Robin McQueen. Okay. Hi, Nick. My name is Robin McQueen, and I'm a Mopar Automotive Digital Artist based out of Tracyville in New Brunswick, Canada. A few years ago, you mailed me an ignition lock and key set for my 1971 Dodge Charger RT. I definitely appreciated this gift. I remember that now. I sent him, uh, he needed a cylinder for a steering column and I gave it to him as a gift. You know, someone gave them to me as a gift. They gave me a few of them. So you know what? They gave it to me as a gift. I give it out as a gift. And I thought I would return the favor by sending you a drawing of your 1970 Dodge Charger RT Kowalski printed on a vinyl banner for your garage. So when I began drawing your project, my business was brand new and I was still learning the ropes and developing my style. I did this drawing several times before I was finally satisfied with the result. Something I would be proud to give it to you. In the meantime, I became a Facebook friend with Eugene Castles through our reputation of the 69 Dodge Charger 500. Eugene bought some of my artwork during this time and asked me to draw his Charger once it was finished. Not long ago, he made mention that he was friends with Tim Butler out in BC, the A12 Roadrunner. Tim also asked to have his car drawn. Wow, you've been getting involved with a lot of my uh, clients, which meant three cars associated with Nick's garage were being assembled as completed drawings on my computer. It only made sense to put them together in one drawing. Wow, that is something. Thanks again, Robin Queen, my queen, from New Brunswick. I gotta see this. Oh, look at that. You gotta. We got. Oh, my God. Oh, come on. There's John's car. Johnny's. Tim's. Eugene's. 
Mike from Toronto, Theo from Australia, wow, convertible, Mike Kowalski, wow. This, oh geez, this, 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 this has to be put up in, up in more than a, oh, it's my shop. My shop, my God, did he do a great job on this. Is this something or what, eh? These are all the cars that went through my shop. Oh, this is very special. This is very, this is going up in the shop. Wow. Robin, this is something very special. I see you've been watching my videos and I've always said, you know, I got the best viewers in the, on YouTube. Now who gets gifts like this? Come on, come on. And I'm sure you put a lot of work into this. And is this great? This is fabulous. And this, look, he's got the plates. He's got everything. He's got the air grabber, the shaker on the Hemi Cuda, the vinyl top with the luggage rack, Eugene's car with the red lines, Tim's car with the correct plate. Oh my God, what a job. Wow, even the Air Force decals on the bumper. Man, Robin, you didn't miss out anything. Nothing. Look, he's even got the stripe on the Roadrunner. He didn't miss out anything. Nothing. The correct plate on the Cuda. The air grabber on the Roadrunner. Wow, the lift off hood, four hood bins. Red lines, red lines. This is artwork and beyond. Come on, you guys. Look at it. Just look at it. You can't beat this. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna ask for a copy, but in the meantime, Robin, this is your uh, company. You did a great job, and I'll be more than proud to show it off on Motorama in the coming month. Thank you very much. And this was from Canada, from Dwayne from Nova Scotia. Okay, Dwayne, this is what you sent us. Ooh, it's pretty heavy. I mean, what do we got here? <laughs> More coffee, I believe. This is creamy caramel flan, whole bean. Wheelhouse Coffee Company. Wow. We've never had one of these before. Okay, here we go. Here's the letter. Hello, Nick. I'm ready to you from Annapolis Valley, Nova Scotia. Please enjoy two bags of coffee beans from Wheelhouse Coffee Company. The company is from Harborville, Nova Scotia. I enjoy watching the show. I learn a lot. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and mentorship. Peace, love, and muscle cars. Also, I've included a Labrador flag. I was born in Happy Valley, Goose Bay. Thank you. Dwayne, wow. Another flag to put up. We're going to really run out of space in my shop very soon. I got to make time to put them all up because you know what? We got to be very careful how we put them up because then we got a heating system, we got the lights, we got the windows. So we got to be careful. We got a lot of flags up. So, but I got to make space for all these flags. After all, our viewers sent us the flags and my job is to put them up and I'm going to do my best. Another one to the collection. Okay, this one here is from the United States and it's the furthest one from our shop. Okay, and this is from, where's the name, where's the, this is from James. Okay, James, let's see what you got us. Sunny California. Yeah, I've been to California quite a few times and I love California. It's the home of the hard rod, no? Okay, here we go. More coffee, New Mexico. Oh, this is gonna be cool. I didn't see this one before. Nice, we got a lot of coffee for the winter. Dear Nick, one day surfing YouTube, I did click onto your show. New Mexico Pinion Coffee is a unique blend for that state. I have relatives in Albuquerque, New Mexico, but live in Southern California. The coffee has a hint of chocolate that makes this, to me, an enjoyable brew. Let the viewers know what you think about it. Jim, you know what? Our live show is tomorrow, and uh, we're gonna brew this coffee, and I'm gonna have it on the live show, and I'm gonna tell you what I think. Jim, thank you very much. I'm always surprised when it comes to mail time. And you know, I get gifts from so many people and it's not even Christmas anymore. But you know what, I gotta say a very special thank you to all you guys. Not only gifts, coffees, and points that I search for to finish off my projects, but also unique banners, artwork. And you know, this is something that involved me with my viewers as a friendship. And like I said, in many cases, like now, Robin has united with Tim 
Eugene, and everybody else associated with cars. And this is what makes our show very special with our viewers. And the bottom line, I have to say a special thank you to all my viewers for watching, enjoying, throwing in comments, finding me parts, sending me gifts, and I can't ask for anything more. The only thing I can ask for is subscribe to my channel, press the like button, get on Nick's Garage Instagram, watch us our pictures every day we put up, and enjoy our show. And I want to say a very special thank you. I love you guys all. And thank you. And I'll say it again. Thank you very much. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Nick's Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content, and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.